Coming up on SBU TV, the community is shocked by a weekend tragedy. We'll find out what happened and how those on campus are coping. Hello and welcome to SBU TV. I'm Kevin Clark. And I'm Christy Angieski. St. Bonaventure is mourning the death of 19-year-old student Matthew Dungan after Allegheny Village Police found him unresponsive at an off-campus apartment early Sunday morning. Officials say Dungan collapsed at an off-campus party around 1.30 Sunday morning and attempts to revive him were unsuccessful. The police officer uh, came to the home and began attending to Matthew uh, while they awaited the arrival of emergency vehicles. He was pronounced um, um, dead later at the hospital. A sophomore transfer student from Niagara University, Dungan was only in his second semester at Bonaventure. He was a business major and a member of the men's rugby team. The cause of Dungan's death is still unknown after police determined the first phase of investigation inconclusive Tuesday. Sinzabaugh says it's too early to speculate what caused the death, and what's important now is to focus on the loss at hand. Time will perhaps give us more answers, but time's not going to give us his life back or give us this time that we have as a community to work through this together. The St. Bonaventure community did just that at a memorial service held on campus Monday night. The chapel was filled with Dungan's friends and family who all shared stories to remember the kind of person he was. I think it is how great of a person that Matt was to all of us that makes this so hard. He truly loved everyone and he knew and he made it, and made it impossible not to love him. Though his time at Bonaventure was short, many say Dungan left a lasting impression especially here on the rugby field. Dungan was our B-side all-star this year, I think. You know, we would have never gone undefeated on the B-side without Dungan. Dungan had one huge love in his life, and that was rugby. Most of the stories were about playing rugby and being with his rugby teammates. It was clear Monday night that the loss of a teammate, friend, and classmate has stunned the St. Bonaventure community, and many are still learning to cope. Saying that I've missed him is hard because it feels like he's still here. When I go home, I expect him to be there in the same spot he always is, with a girl on his face, wondering how my day is. For SBU TV, I'm Christy Angieski. Funeral services for Dungan will be held tomorrow morning in his hometown of Tonawanda. The university will provide bus transportation for those who wish to attend. Weekend partying is a college tradition, and that partying often includes alcohol. Last fall, we reported on the effects of the canned high-powered drink for loco, which was banned in its old form in many states, including New York. But it's still available on the shelves of at least two area beverage stores. Leah Murphy reports. We brought you a story last semester on the alcoholic energy drink called Four Loco. It was banned in New York State last December because of the dangerous ingredients contained in it. It contains 12% alcohol and a large amount of caffeine. It's often called blackout in a can or liquid cocaine. The FDA says, and quote, four logos are a public concern. It's now an illegal drink that should be off beverage store shelves, but we found out that it isn't. Store selling can be subject to a fine. Stores here in Allegheny, like the Bev Center and Wilson Farms, are still selling the old four logos. I bought this one here in Allegheny. This movement on banning Four Loco and other products like this follows a year-long process by the FDA, which gave companies 15 days to either reformulate their products or force possible seizure under the law. Fusion Projects of Chicago, Illinois, make Four Loco and announced on January 11th that they are dropping caffeine and two other stimulants. It will be called Four Loco Triple X Limited Edition. This product is so unhealthy to put into your body. How do you know? Well, the old caffeinated Four Loco is being recycled and turned into ethanol by a company in Virginia. Fueling your car with this. For SBU TV, I'm Leah Murphy. 
The story on SVU TV last fall showed Allegheny police testing students with a breathalyzer device after drinking for a loco, and the drink made at least one legally drunk. When someone on the university campus falls ill, the medical emergency response team, MERT, is ready for action. But sometimes procedural issues can stand in the way of medics doing their job. SBU TV's Lauren Adams reports. When a student needs medical attention, MERT is on call. We offer first aid and medical response to um, anybody who's on campus. Last year, MERT responded to over 200 calls. There's times when people can actually come out of things um, and it, you just don't know depending on the situation. So, I mean, getting um, medical attention is critical. In order to contact MERT, a caller must first call campus security. A dispatcher alerts MERT's pagers and members respond on scene. Security must then arrive on scene with a bag with one very important piece of medical equipment. Blood pressure cuffs, we need to get a set of vitals on a person because that's one of our determining factors on whether we send a person. So, um, there is obviously we do need the bag. MERT has a two to five minute response time after their pagers are called. One MERT member thinks the stigma of calling security may have some students fear getting in trouble for seeking medical attention. I do think we have lost a lot of call volume due to people, oh, I don't want to get in trouble. He has an idea of what may make students feel safer and more willing to contact MERT. If we had our own line, we, could, we would know a little more because we have a little more training than security officers. For SBU TV, I'm Lauren Adams. SBU TV has learned that some MERT members are looking to make changes to MERT procedures. They'd prefer security officers to take a medical dispatch course so they're better prepared to handle medical emergencies. By the way, St. Bonaventure Security Director Vito Chez insisted on being present when the preceding interviews were recorded. A brand new building has recently opened in Olean. People suffering from non-life-threatening medical issues now have a new option in town. And First Urgent Care is an urgent care center that is set up to provide care for the, those who have unexpected illness or injury at times when their doctor's office is closed or their doctor's unavailable. That care can include ailments like colds, okay. flus, infections and eye troubles, or injuries side. such as fractures and sprains. Things that people will feel that they know that if they went to an emergency department they would be going home with. Um, however, we can provide very efficient care. About 98% of the time they'll be in and out within an hour. If it is after 5 p.m. or a weekend, MedFirst is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. Or if you're worried about the financial burden of medical care, MedFirst is said to be a cost-effective option to the emergency room lower co-pays than the emergency department and also a lower cost to the community than an emergency department and the quality is the same as you would get at your physician's office or an emergency department. MedFirst does accept insurance and offers an option for those who may not have coverage. And we also have a program for those who are uninsured where if they sign up for our HTN discount card they can get a 20 percent discount um, on their service to even make it more affordable. For SBU TV, I'm Erin Lowry. MedFirst is located at 921 Wayne Street. Up next, we'll see a group of students, St. Bonaventure students, who cross state lines to make a difference and show you how to stay prepared for driving in the winter. St. Bonaventure University lost a member of its student body during winter break. St. Bonaventure senior Matthew Martinelli died of respiratory failure January 3rd. He was 24. Very nice kid. He's always uh, down for pretty much anything. Um, he was very enthusiastic about everything he did. Uh, really nice guy. Martinelli was confined to a wheelchair due to muscular dystrophy, but is remembered for the courage he displayed while working toward his goal of becoming a sports journalist. We all have things in our everyday life that we think, oh, I can't face that. I can't get through that. We all, we all complain about something. And, and I didn't hear him complain about much. And you know what, if there's somebody who could complain about something, I'm, I'm sure he could have, but you didn't hear him do that. Martinelli studied here at St. Bonaventure's Jandoli School of Journalism and Mass Communication. But it was out here, behind the building, one day last spring, he let his creativity and sense of humor truly show. Martinelli and class partner Christian Seabaugh recreated a game of chicken with an interesting twist. 
was actually of a, a man in a wheelchair playing chicken against a man in a, driving a Mustang. Seaboss said his inspiration for chicken came from a YouTube video featuring a rally car performing donuts around a Segway. We decided to do something similar to that and uh, we used Matt on his uh, wheelchair and he was just like, yeah man, let's do it. He was all excited for it. I was horrified at first, but you know, it, it was a beautifully shot and beautifully edited and beautifully told video. Uh, it was just actually one of the best sequences I'd ever seen. Seaboss said Martinelli's determination will have a lasting impact on him. You know, he just lived his life with the cards that he's dealt with and lived it happily. For SBU TV, I'm Tyler Deidre. Martinelli was buried January 8th at the St. Bonaventure Cemetery. A group of St. Bonaventure students traveled to Washington, D.C. this week to make a difference. On a chilly January 24th, St. Bonaventure students from SB for Life headed to Washington, D.C. to participate in the 30th Annual March for Life. Father Peter Schneibel, who is the faculty sponsor for SB for Life, believes college students like those of St. Bonaventure are essential to the pro-life movement. Obviously, it's about young life, and they are younger people. They are the people who are going to shape the opinions of our society in the future. Uh, they are full of idealism, and I think this is an issue that speaks about idealism. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people meet right here on the National Mall in hopes of rallying and overturning legislation making abortion illegal. While those involved in the pro-life movement are passionate about legislation being overturned, co-president of SPU for Life, Martin Spear, understands his peers are a tough group to sway. Everybody has a different perspective and you have to be prepared to take people where they are and accept that more likely than not they're not going to accept everything that you have to say. The March in D.C. is not SBU for Life's only event. Those interested in getting involved can support the pro-life movement right here on St. Bonaventure's campus. We do 24-hour prayers on campus. Um, we've done many marches in the past. We're trying to bring a speaker from the Feminist for Life to campus. And even though this is Martin's 21st March for Life that he's been to, the chilly Monday in Washington, D.C. still fascinating. Actually, one of our group members put it really well before when they asked how many people come, and we said about 500,000, uh, depending on the year. And they said, wow, that feels really cool to be involved in something that big. In Washington, D.C., for SBU TV, I'm Shannon Shepard. Students interested in getting involved with SBU for Life can email Martin Spear or Taylor Janik. Journalism and mass communication students prepare themselves to say their farewells to a fellow professor and friend. A professor here at St. Bonaventure University since August 2005, as well as the only African American woman in the JMC department, Bria Willingham announced that her Bonaventure journey will come to an end this May. My motivation is to finish my dissertation. I've been working on my PhD for the last five years mm -hmm. and it's becoming increasingly harder for me to juggle both teaching full-time and doing school full-time. Professor Willingham will receive her PhD in American Studies from the University of Buffalo after a dissertation on the incarceration of black women is completed. One student felt that Professor Willingham always made class interesting. She brings a new element um, in a new style like into teaching I think that she's really expanded like all the students knowledge on not only just what is happening in um, in our culture but in other cultures too. Being that Professor Willingham brings to the table an incredible professional background and diversity to the classroom with her ethnicity and race replacing her will be a difficult task. Uh, what I think we need now is someone who can teach across a broad spectrum of the communications field and basically if we can find someone with that knowledge and experience plus the youth plus the uh, tenacity of Professor Willingham, well, we'll be well served in the school of journalism. Dean Coppola stated that if someone is named to succeed him before Professor Willingham leaves, then he will personally take the new dean into discussion and make aware the tremendous contributions Professor Willingham has done for the JMC department. I'm Brittany Wally and this is SBU TV. Willingham plans to travel to Poland in May to present a paper on incarcerated fathers and their children at a global prison conference. 
With the economy showing little or no signs of recovering, more and more college students are making alternate plans for post-graduations. According to the Department of Education, in 2007, there were 1.4 million college graduates. In 2011, there will be almost 1.6 million. As if the competition of finding a job after college wasn't tough enough, try tacking on the 9.1% unemployment rate. Since the recession, graduate enrollment has increased nearly 6%. It seems that college graduates are pressing pause on professionalism and resorting to graduate school to weigh off the uncertain economy. I think that a lot of graduate students or a lot of undergraduate students are looking at graduate school as an opportunity for them to do something instead of just perhaps go home and be with their parents or do a job maybe they're not as interested in. And in fact, I have had graduate students who've said to me, you know, part of the reason that I'm here is because I couldn't find a job in my field or a job that I thought was interesting, so I thought I would pursue graduate school. In this uncertain economy, I think that I'm not really comfortable about entering the job market right away, right after undergrad and finding a job. Also, I feel like I'd like to have a leg up on the competition by going to grad school, especially, especially going into the medical field, specifically pharmaceuticals. I think it'd be nice to have a leg up on the competition, per se. Although undergraduate degrees don't mean what they used to, in the end, graduate degrees are, in fact, preferred by employers. They also make the slim window of getting a job a little bigger. For SBU TV, I'm Andrew Serrato. Experts project the job market to continue to be weak and oversaturated with college graduates. Planning on taking a road trip? Traffic accidents may not be the only problem on the highways this winter. Connor Mooney reports. When winter driving weather hits, traffic accidents aren't the only danger on the road. Spending long hours in traffic jams can also be very dangerous. I'm always afraid of getting stuck because I have gotten stuck in the past. But when you're stuck in your car in frigid temperatures in a traffic jam, you may need more things in your car than you think. 30 below, 40 below, the wind chill does get down in that type of temperatures in this, this time yeah. of year. So. Packing your vehicle with winter supplies may cause for a safer, less stressful traffic jam experience. I have all my supplies with me. You just never know. Roadside assistants and frequent travelers gave us some tips on how to keep warm during the winter driving season. Make sure you, you carry some liquid with you just in case, something to drink, maybe a little snack. Always have a ton of extra clothes because you know what? All you got to do is get stuck in the car for a couple hours, maybe run out of gas, and it gets very cold. I consider a half tank of gas empty. You know, if you got kids with you, make sure that they're provided for because you never know when a storm like this is going to set in. Next time you hit the road, be prepared to bundle up. For SPU TV, I'm Connor Mooney. Experts say always have a spare battery on hand in case you or your family ever find yourself stuck on the road. You don't have to go on national television to be a part of the hit reality show, The Biggest Loser. The hard work, commitment, and rewards seen during the weight loss experience on The Biggest Loser can be your reality through Bonner's Biggest Loser program. Um, it's a 10-week weight loss challenge where um, you have to weigh in every week and um, there's prizes awarded. It's pretty much just like the TV show, um, except for we don't have trainers. It's what you do on your own and how you can go about losing weight yourself. The program runs from January 26th to March 30th and includes the advantage of using measuring tools. We have a handheld device that figures out your BMI and your body fat and we require them to do that every week along with their weigh-in. The program is available to students and employees in teams of three and all must have a body mass index of 25 or greater. No matter what size you are, I feel like getting fit and eating healthy is a really important part of life and I feel like the Biggest Loser Challenge will really motivate everyone. What about those who don't meet the BMI requirement and still want to be part of the program? Even though I'm under the BMI, I feel like people, everyone should be able to participate because um, they, we should be able to set our own goals and and see how we progress each week. Um, we have a couple of people that are actually participating this um, year so far by themselves. They're not on a team, they just um, are going to track their weight and their um, measurements and whatnot throughout the program. All who compete will be entered in to win an iPod shuffle, but the real prize is the satisfaction of accomplishing your weight loss goals. For SBU TV, I'm Megan Sidori. Registration packets and competition rules can be picked up in the Richter Center and are also available online.
Students getting caught downloading illegally isn't just something you hear about. It's actually happened to St. Bonaventure students. But is the message really getting through? In recent years, downloading music illegally has become popular among college campuses. But do students really know what they're getting themselves into? I guess the best way I start the story is just to tell you it was Taylor Swift. All they told me to do was delete the files and the email them back and they'd give me my internet privileges back. I was really scared. Yeah. You know what? I, I just still download music illegally because I don't even think it's wrong because so many people do it. It's just so easy. It's not like you go to a store and you steal food or something. It just doesn't even feel wrong. You don't even think about it. And the cost of music is just so expensive now, so I don't even feel bad. 99 cents for a song? Give me a break. While well, St. Bonaventure University has been very vocal about students downloading music illegally, other students are still in the dark about ways to download music that are completely legal. On campus, I think they're making a bigger deal on illegally downloaded music than it really is because you can go to YouTube and use a YouTube converter and you can take other people's MP3s off their videos and that's not illegal, supposedly. So I feel that the campus is kind of going a little overboard with the uh, illegal downloading of music. Well, I'm a senior now, freshman year, I got in trouble for illegally downloading some material on my computer. I got an email from Tech Services, basically told me to just stop downloading and to delete what I've already had and we, it was like a cease and desist order basically and they would just, they would just call it even. Whether students who illegally download have or haven't already faced the consequences, they may always be one click away from hefty fines. For SPU-TV, I'm Joe Landers. Regardless of how technically savvy you are, just remember that someone may always be watching. Coming up in sports, we'll take a look at how St. Bonaventure fared against UMass in A-10 play. After a spirited road win in front of a large contingent of St. Bonaventure faithful at George Washington last weekend, the Bonnies return home Wednesday to host the UMass Minutemen. Demetrius Conger dropped this jumper from the corner to give the Bonnies a 3-0 lead. UMass guard Anthony Gurley answered with a three of his own to tie the game at 3-3. Gary Correa followed that up with a triple off a nice feed from Sean Carter, and UMass took the lead 6-3. to three. Freddie, Riley, Freddie Riley's jumper capped a 4-4 four for four UMass run from beyond the arc. Sam DeHaas had this three-pointer hang on the rim before it finally fell through. Watch as the UMass defender and Andrew Nicholson both nearly tipped the ball in. De Haas ended the half with a three at the buzzer to send the Bonnies to the locker room trailing 39-31. Trailing Early in the second half, Nicholson fought off four UMass defenders to finish off an offensive rebound. Then Marquis Simmons converted the transi transition layup to put the Bonnies within two. Big, big UMass refused to relinquish the lead as Gurley started a 12-0 run with this leaner in the lane. He then beat Michael Davenport off the dribble for two more of his game-high 28 points. UMass defeated St. Bonaventure 78-69. to Simmons led the Bonnies with 14 points and eight rebounds off the bench. The Bonnies will honor the first All-American in program history, Tom Stith, by wearing commemorative TS number 42 patches during Saturday afternoon's game at Fordham. The St. Bonaventure men's basketball team has already played three overtime games this season. There was a quadruple overtime game against Ohio in December and a three overtime game against Charlotte. As a result, a couple players are atop the nation in minutes played per game. Steal is that a boy 
Ogo Adeboye has played an entire game five different times this season, including playing 55 minutes in that three overtime game versus Charlotte. Adeboye leads the nation in minutes played per game with just over 39 minutes. But the minutes aren't important to him. I'm not, I'm not playing to lead the NCAA minutes. I'm playing, I'm playing to win. Adeboye's teammate Demetrius Conger has played 37 minutes per game, which ranks 14th nationally. And Conger is just happy to be playing. It's an honor, I guess, you know. You know, I get to play that much, you know, because a lot of people, you know, some people don't even touch the floor. Head coach Mark Schmidt isn't concerned with his players logging all these minutes. Yeah, they're not tied yet, so I don't foresee them getting any um, getting tied. I, I think that's just so overblown. Um, you know, I say, you know, 18, 19, 20, 22 year old kids. At first, Adeboye struggled balancing his life as a student and playing so many minutes. I mean, I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know how crucial it was with everything I do with my schedule. I mean, let's say. I don't do my homework, it's going to feed into my stretching time and you know what I'm saying, so I mean now I'm really, I really, I really know how to deal with it. To play all these minutes, Adeboye spends extra time in the training room. Ice, icing, ice bath, stretching, I mean the whole shebang, <laughs> so yeah. And Conger focuses on making sure he stays in shape. You like, we'd be playing that much minutes, you know, you just got to take care of your body better, you know, eat right, sleep, you know. To give his players more time to rest, Schmidt plans substitutions around the media timeouts every four minutes of game action. We try to be smart about that. Um, trying to, you know, at like if there's eight minutes and 50 seconds, you're going to get one at eight, so you try to take a guy out and give him more than, you know, 50 second breather. Adeboye doesn't see himself wearing down as the season moves into February. Now, I mean, we've played how many games? 18 games now, so yeah, I'm pretty used to it. Let's hope for the Bonnie's sake that he can finish the season strong. That's all for this week on SBU TV. I'm Kevin Clark. And I'm Christy Andrzejewski. For the rest of us here in the Coop Lab, thanks for watching.